So in the South, uh, that last talk, we would have a word that's just darn. I mean, seriously, gum. I mean, how? In, and not only, like, I get this awesome spot. I'm between you and lunch. <laughs> so, a dweeb, a pastor, a brewer, meet in a bar. It's not the beginning of a joke. It's just how I typically introduce myself. Like Bo said, my name is Trey Bowden. I've been here at Mount Vernon, served as the creative director for five years. I cannot believe it's been that long. But it is an amazing, incredible place. And as a creative director, of course, one of the things that I absolutely love is design. Now, people ask me, like, well, what, what does design actually mean? Because there's probably as, as many definitions of design as there are designers, right? And the way that we talk about design here at Mount Vernon and what I teach my students when we're talking about design is that design is any moment where there's a gap between experience and expectations. The first time that I had the opportunity of watching design thinking happen was in eighth grade when I was watching Dateline. That tells you a lot about me in the eighth grade. Um, I was watching this special of this crazy guy with glasses with like this crazy hair where at the end of the day, what they, he was leading this team of crazy people with sticky notes and all this sort of thing engaged in this problem to solve around redesigning the shopping cart, right? That the shopping cart itself had a gap between experience and expectations, that there was a design problem to be had. And that person was David Kelly of IDEO, and I was like, man, I want to work in a place like this. So I come here for my interview, and I walk into this room, and I just see sticky notes everywhere, and I was like, Lord Jesus, I have landed. <laughs> I am home. I was so excited because at the end of the day, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a school that does something amazing that they believe, they're so audacious to believe this, is that there are needs in the world, physical, social, and global needs that students can actually solve now. Now that is a mission I could get behind. And not only that, they used it and they do it by putting the user in the center. So as a pastor, of course, like, I'm like, whoa, this is, this is amazing. I was a pastor at church before coming here, and I was like, you know, ultimately when I think about like, who is the like, best design thinker in the world, it would be Jesus himself. He was very people-centered. Now, don't, everyone, calm down. There's not going to be an altar call at the end. It's not happening. <laughs> but I do think that Jesus presents, and his mission that he presents is people-centered. I mean, at the end of the day, if your mission is to redeem all of humanity, well, that's pretty daggum, like, uh, people-centered, right? I mean, that's, that's a big deal. So I want to tell you a couple of stories uh, that I think I find in Scripture, but at the same time, connect them to some of the ways that our students are being design thinkers as well. So the first story is this story of um, Jesus healing this man um, that had a shriveled hand. Right? So we get this story, this man comes up to Jesus, and through his face, his hand is made new. Now, what's interesting about this is maybe he had CP, um, like cerebral palsy, or maybe he, had, um, maybe he had like injured it early in life, or maybe even he was born with this deformity. But at the end of the day, this man was restored because of his physical condition. Now, at Mount Vernon, we're not going around healing people's hands. It's not happening. However, we are doing something amazing. This is Alex. Alex was a high school student at Dunwoody High School right down the street from us. And Alex was born with a deformed hand. And he was connected with us through a program called Enable. And Enable matches a user in your area with a school that has a 3D printer and says, here's the deal. We're going to give you the STL files to actually print a hand for this user. And then custom fit it to them. So you can develop this relationship. Right now, in high school, that was not my experience. Not at all. Like when I think about what I got to do, I don't really remember much of the projects that I got to do. They weren't very memorable. Now, these students in Mount Vernon have had an amazing experience. This is the type of stuff that they've been growing up with. And the first time that they met Alex and the second time they met Alex, honestly, there wasn't like a lot of motivation. I want to be like, y'all are 3D printing a hand for somebody. Wake up! Right? That's what I want to tell them. But it wasn't until this moment, 
And it was their moment of visible empathy when Alex came to, to, to fit on a hand, and this is what happened. This, this guy, Alex, he says, y'all, this is what I want to do. I want to drive with one hand, and I want to drink a Coke with the other. It's so simple. But all of a sudden, the students were like, bing. We're not designing a hand for Alex. We're helping him be just like you and me. It's not about the hand. It's about the accessibility. In fact, in that Jesus story, the guy that would have his hand restored now could interact with the community because at that time, culturally, he would have been ostracized. In the same way, our students and, our, and a design thinker thinks about what physically can we change in the world to make it a better place. Another story is this story of Good Samaritan. Those of you who have been in church have heard this story a hundred times. Those of you who haven't probably understand this story just culturally because it's just a part of what we talk about. So the Good Samaritan has these, these two characters in the very beginning. It's a parable of Jesus. The first two are Jewish leaders. And there's this other guy who's in a ditch, and he is badly wounded from being robbed. The first two Jewish leaders walk past. And the reason why they walk past is because if they would interact with the man down there who is bleeding, they would actually become unclean, right? But the third person who comes by is a Samaritan. And this Samaritan goes down, bandages the guy up, He takes him to an inn, and he pays for several days of him getting well. Now, there might not be like, okay, so good Samaritan, right? Well, if you know the cultural idea of what a Samaritan was, this person was the most ostracized. This is the person that when you have your kids out, you would be like, "Uh uh-oh, that guy's coming. I'm going to put the kid behind me. Get behind me. It's cool. Let's just keep walking. Design thinking calls us actually to be the good Samaritan by delaying and deferring our judgment. That if we're going to make the world a better place, if we're going to design for a better world, we have to delay our judgment and and not assume before getting into and actually empathizing with our user. One of my favorite stories of this is some lower school children who are in uh, the library just down the street, and they saw this sign. And one of the students came up to Chris Andres, one of our amazing team leader, awesome people here. They're all awesome, but he's pretty awesome for sure. But he, this, this kid comes up and goes, hey, Ed, hey, uh, hey Andres, I, I got a question. Why would someone be washing and bathing inside of a bathroom? And so Chris, like the Good Samaritan, unlike what many of us in education do, we pass by the moment, like those Jewish leaders in the story, he said, oh, wait a minute. This could be a moment of visible empathy. And he says, guys, let me tell you, and let's do some investigation around homeless individuals here in our community. And what, he dis- what they discovered was, is, is not that, not, they didn't want to call this idea of like that where they were homeless, is that they were houseless, that, that being, having a home is really just an interesting, complex thing. And, and there's so much socially that's going on here. And these students, these lower school students went into this whole unit of like, how do we engage and think about like, what does it mean to be houseless? So their final prototype at the very end um, was actually during our winter break. Um, to design a, a place for people who were houseless, a place for them to just, at least over the holidays, to have a place that they would call home. Now, lastly, at the very end of the Bible, we get this picture of Jesus redeeming and, and this new world, this, this new life that he's bringing in. There'll be no more tears and no more pain. And this is like ultimate, like when you're thinking about a design thinker and you're like, what's about people-centered problem solving? Well, this is the idea of removing problems from people completely for the rest of time. It is like the ultimate design challenge. The truth is, is that we live in a really chaotic and uncertain and complex and volatile world. Like really, at the end of the day, there's so much pain and there's so many ways for us to engage. There's so many ways that we actually are challenged to rather be empathetic at a distant. But I think what design thinkers do is they try whatever they can 
to get into bringing students, bringing designers, and to engage them with real life users. And this isn't about like planning three weeks, four weeks within your classroom, within your school to go through a whole process of design thinking. This is about being a designer. It's about thinking like a designer and saying in any moment there might be a place to close that gap between experiences and expectations. Now, how many of you, just shout out what you think, the law, what is the average time that somebody spends in a refugee camp? Six months? Ten years. Ten years? Seven years? Seventeen years. The average refugee, when they're displaced from camp to camp until they come home, the average time is 17 years. We can't fathom that. We don't understand that. But at the end of the day, the truth is, is that there are people in our world that have been displaced. Syria is a huge situation. But how do you get students to actually engage with Syria, right? Now, we're lucky. We, we do have a, uh, a resettlement town here in Atlanta. It's one of the, the, most, uh, the, the most diverse square mile in America is what they call it. But the truth is, is, is our students, we wanted them to have this experience. Marie Graham, one of our amazing coaches that you'll get to meet, she's a hugger. Embrace it, because she can hug for reals. But she, she, uh, she said, you know what? At the end of the day, I, I want to think like a designer. I'm not going to go through a whole design thinking challenge or anything like that, but I'm going to think like a designer. I want my students to have a moment of visible empathy. So what she did is, is she, she knew that New York Times had this, had this VR experience of going into a camp where they could actually put on some headphones and watch and be in full immersive moment of being inside of a refugee camp. And the thing is, is that we might be able to just show that up on a screen and kind of get there, but when you do this experience and you get into it and you're listening to it, like you can hear what it's like to be in Sudan in a refugee camp. Now you're creating an experience. So what I hope you get out of Fuse, what I hope you get out of design thinking, and it's a constant question that people ask us all the time, well, how do you like set up your curriculum to do this? Well, that again is around this idea of what Bo was talking about, right? Like it's not about the solution, it's about the problem. The problem is, is that we have to change our thinking, right? Jesus actually says this at one point. He says, repent. And the actual Greek word means change your mind. It's metanoia. And this idea of like, we need to change our mind, change our thinking. And when we see things that are physical in our world that have a gap between experience and expectation and things that are socially out there or when, when there's global problems, rather than being empathetic at a distance, we choose to step in and ask the question, how might we design a better world? Thank you.